This is The Motorbike Show. Now, motorcycling kind of means different things to different people. It's either a way of life to you, or you could just use it as a means of conveyance. But you could use your motorcycling skills to help others who are less fortunate. One of those ways is to be a blood biker. They are the unsung heroes of Britain's medical system. 1,500 volunteer motorcyclists who operate out of hours, riding through the night and the weekend, transporting anything from blood to breast milk, from one hospital to another. All are advanced riders, all are unpaid. To learn more and find out whether I've got the right stuff to become a blood biker, I've come to Aylesbury in Buckinghamshire to meet Danny, who's been a volunteer for the last nine years. Danny? Oh, hi. Hello, mate. Nice to see hi, you. Yeah. Now, look, seriously, right, is there any time during these proceedings that I might actually have some blue flashing lights? No, no, that's not going to happen. Oh, <laughs> As Danny explains, even though their bikes come equipped with police-style flashing lights and sirens, at the moment, they're not allowed to use them. So you basically have to stay within the law completely all the time? We do, yeah. We don't get any exemptions, stay within the uh, speed limit, observe red lights. Blood bikers come from all walks of life. Some give a few hours a week, others may do several shifts. A lot of our members have got their own personal reasons uh, for doing what they do. One of my children uh, was very ill uh, when she was younger, so we use the, the NHS a lot. So for me, um, it's, it's a good way of uh, giving back. Before you become a blood biker, you have to be checked out by the team. There's a classroom-based element and practical assessment. In my case, I have to navigate my way to Stoke Mandeville Hospital, followed by another trainer, Dave. So, Dave, look, just very quick, okay. what are you going to be looking for for me as a rider? Right, experienced rider. Yep. Got your advance rating. I'm just yep. looking for safety, yeah. good positioning, yep. good use of gears, and a nice, safe, good progressive ride. That's really all we're looking for today. And I'm going to give you this because you need to wear one of these for oh, the day. Mate, I thought I'd just get one at the end of the day if I passed. No, you have to have one of these for when we do the... Look at that. Huh? ...the assessment ride. I think it's the first time I've worn a high-vis experience. Yeah. Now, someone told me the other day that these high-vis greens and oranges are kind of sort of so last year that pink is the way forward. Well, I think we're going to stick with the old ones. I'm not sure about pink. I'm glad you said that, mate. I'll tell you what, if this was pink, I'd have a bit of an issue. So we're off in my green luminosity. My old Norton is my best mate, but when you're being assessed, it adds a whole extra level of stress when you're on a bike, which has neither a speedometer or indicators. No, I must stay within the speed limit. There are a couple of awkward moments. Oh! Run a pedestrian over. Dave's not going to be happy about that. But 20 minutes after setting off, I'm very close, and though I've been tempted, I've stuck within the letter of the law. It is difficult not to want to really hammer it when you can. We're at the hospital, but where on earth do they take deliveries of blood? I'd better let Dave go up front. <laughs> Oh, I'd never have found that. I mean, that's the reason why. Dave, you had to take over, mate. I didn't have a clue. It's difficult to know where to come. You found the hospital all right. Yeah, but it's a really big place. So, look, mate, was I all right? You did really well, Henry. Did I? Yeah, that was really great. I can't believe someone's actually said that to me. Normally, it's like, you could have done a lot better. Well, there was a couple of moments. My heart skipped a beat, but otherwise you did really well. It was a nice progressive ride, nice Good. and safe. And that's what we're looking for. That's what we want from our riders. So you've passed. So I've got you your card oh here. My. So you're now yeah. a proper blood biker. Am I Rick? Yeah, you are, yeah. So when you come to places like this, they can see straight away that you're accredited, you're fully fledged. That's fantastic. I'll tell you what, Dave, you know, for me, OK, even though I'm just riding Mavis here, look, I've got my Ivy's jacket on with blood on the back and now I've got my accreditation. I feel as though that I'm a paid-up member of society. I'm doing my little bit and giving something back. That's the feeling that you mustn't miss out on. Anyway, look, before I start ranting, Dave, let's go and have a look inside, see what all this yeah, is about. Come okay. on. The haematology department gets through thousands of litres of blood every year. 
As specialist nurse Katie tells me, blood bikers play a vital role. They are extremely important to us. It allows us a bit of flexibility. It allows us to do things that maybe we wouldn't have been able to do in the time frames that we had before. But before I go, there's just one little thing I want to do. You know what I'm going to ask, don't you? I do. Just, you want to have the blue lights on, Henry, don't you? Just a little bit. Not beyond the hospital grounds. All right, that'll do. Hey. OK. So, look, if you want to get involved in becoming a blood biker, just search blood bikes and they'll put you in touch, basically. Yeah. Yeah, is that right? That is absolutely correct, yeah. And I have to tell you, it's definitely a good way to spend the day or night, I reckon. Oh, so where's the... Uh... This bit here, That's it, Dave. Yeah. Uh, are those working? Yes, they are. Right, you're away. Right on, Henry. Thanks, mate. I may be some time. And talking of sweating blood, 